It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the job. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch, with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you, time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Now, here's our story, Checkered Neckerchief. Mineral City is a whistle stop. Now, a whistle stop doesn't really have anything to do with politics. It's a place where the train doesn't stop unless it has passengers to discharge. And when it does, it signals with a whistle. Today, Roy Rogers and Pat Brady and the sheriff are at the railroad station waiting for... Hey, there's a whistle, Roy. She's going to stop all right. Oh, sure, Pat. Young Ted and the sheriff's new deputy can't very well jump off. Roy, my Uncle Fred used to have a saying, this is killing two birds with one stone. You might say that's what we're doing today, huh? Sure, it's fine that your new man could bring Ted in from the city. I'm afraid I'm getting the best of the bargain, Roy. I'm getting a graduate from a college of criminology, and you're getting nothing but a juvenile delinquent. Oh, you lay off that kid, Sheriff. He may have been in a lot of trouble, but he's no criminal. That's right. We know he was keeping bad company, but I think living on the ranch for a while will straighten him out a lot faster than a reform school would. And, Sheriff, I don't think I'd hire a deputy without at least talking to him first. What's his name, Joe Linder? You say something about a cinder? That's as dry as a tender. Hey, you fellas better continue the discussion after the train stops. Hey. That must be Ted and your deputy, Sheriff. At least they're the only two people getting off the train. Hey, he ain't a bad-looking kid. Kind of scrawny, but we'll fatten him up. Come on. Linda's a real sharp-looking young chap. I'll bet he'll do my department a lot of good. Linda? Well, I thought you said his name was Kinder. Oh, hi there, Ted. I'm Roy Rogers, and this is my sidekick, Pat Brady. Ted, we're mighty glad to have you in Paradise Valley. Yeah, I'll bet. Mr. Linder, I'm the sheriff. Hi, George. Welcome to Mineral City. This is Roy Rogers and Pat Brady. How are you, Sheriff? Howdy. Well, I brought this one in safely. Come on, Ted. Shake hands. How am I going to do that? Hey, what's the idea of handcuffing this youngster to yourself, Linder? I wasn't taking any chances on the young punk doing a run out. Well, caterwaul and catamount. Is that the kind of nonsense they teach you at criminal witchemological weather college? Say, unlock these handcuffs right now. Look, fella, don't talk to me like that. Better take the cuffs off the kid, Joe. After all, he's in Roger's custody now, and we don't want to get off on the wrong foot. Well, all right, but... There you are, kid. That's better. Now, put her there, Ted. If you say so, and... Thanks, Mr. Rogers. It's just Roy, Ted. Yeah, and I'm just Pat. And my Jeep over there is just Nellie Belt. Come on, let's get started for the ranch. Maybe we better stop in town first and get you some jeans and shirts and boots and stuff like that. Yeah, you'll feel much better on the ranch when you shed those city duds. Joe, I'll drive you in and introduce you to some of the folks. I'll see you later, Roy. Pat. Right, sir. Pat. Pat. Yeah, so long, Rogers. And good luck with that little burglar. Oh, you big now, monkey. Take it easy, Ted. Oh, so I broke in a couple of stores. I didn't get away with anything. We know the whole story, and the quicker we all forget it, the more fun we're going to have. Sure. You may have gotten in with kind of a rough bunch in the city, but you won't miss them a bit once you get to knocking around with horses and the cattle and the dogs and Nellie Bell. You really have horses out there, huh? We sure have. Do you like to ride? I never tried it. But I know one thing. The prettiest thing in the whole world is a good horse. Hey, Ted, you and I think just alike. 
Come on, let's get in and buy you that outfit. Say, you look great, Ted. Here you are, young man. Will there be anything else? I guess Ted's pretty well fixed up. Uh, see anything else you need, Ted? No, Roy. Except... Uh, Ted, I'm looking at the very same thing. All oh, them blue and white checkered neckerchiefs are really fancy, ain't they? Hey, we forgot neckerchiefs. These are the very newest thing. <laughs> you like that design, Ted? Man, those are real crazy. I mean, they're real, George. I, I mean... Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> well, swell. Uh, let's have a half a dozen of those George ones. Fine. I'll just put them in the bag with the other things, young man. I better keep one out. I'll put it on right now. Here, I'll carry the package for you while you adjust it, Ted. Well, so long, Mr. Kent. Put those things on my bill, okay? Of course, Roy. Ted, the Eureka Cafe is just a couple of doors down the street. I want you to meet my friend, Dale Evans. Yeah, you like the Eureka, Ted. Especially when I'm doing the cooking. Gosh, it's hard to get used to walking in these boots. Now, what's the matter, kid? You got tacks in your boots? Oh, it's that Ed Stratton's kid in his convertible. Wow, pure yellow. Uh, hi there, Brian. Uh, this is Ted Barnes. Ted, Brian Stratton. Howdy. Oh, I heard you were coming to town. Uh, don't bother to come over and shake hands. I don't think you can walk that far. Hey, now, look out, Brian. Dad told me all about that guy, Roy. And I know too many people already. Well, come on, Ted. Well, how do you like that spoiled young muzzler? Looks like everybody around here has heard about me. They're going to be hearing good things from now on. Don't you worry about it. This hamburger's real cool, Miss Evans. Oh, I'll be glad to heat it over for you, Ted, but... Oh, you mean you <laughs> like it. <laughs> sure. We're going to have to get used to the new language around here, Dave. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, quit apologizing, Ted. You talk the way you want to. Say, from what you've seen of Paradise Valley so far, do you think you're going to like it, Ted? I haven't seen much of it yet, but I sure like some of the people. Anybody want anything else while I still got my apron on? Another hamburger, Ted? Oh, I guess I could eat another. Man, once the rancher gets to working on your appetite, we're going to have to raise extra cattle to keep you filled up. One with onions, pickle, mustard, relish, tomato, and pork chops coming right up. <laughs> well, who's this with the sheriff, Roy? Where? Oh, that's his new deputy. Yes, you came out from the city with him, didn't you, Ted? Uh... Now, watch it, Ted. Just making the rounds, Dale, introducing Joe Linda to all the citizens. Uh, Miss Evans, may I present Joe? Mr. Linda, this is Dale. How, How are you, Dale? Do? And these other folks are... Oh, you've met, haven't you? Well, sure we have, Sheriff. Won't you sit down and have some coffee? I was hoping you'd ask us that. Let's sit at the other end of the counter, Sheriff. Say, we're having a rush. Hi there, Brian. What can we do for you? Oh, a Coke or something. I just stopped in to see if Roy's stumble-bum friend got his feet untacked yet. Why, you lousy little rat. <laughs> Me, will you, you dirty thief? Don't call me that. Hey, you kid, cut it out. I'll stop him, Sheriff Barnes, you punk jailbird. Cut it, Linder. I'll stop them. Get back here now. This is no place for that sort of thing, Ted. What he called me, he called me a... People are going to be mighty careful what they call you from now on. Remember that, Brian, and you remember too, Linder. Brian, I think you'd better run along until you cool off. Yeah, I was going anyway. But I'll tell you one thing, Ted, or whatever your name is. I'll get even with you. Back with Roy in a jiffy. Right now, let's chat with his three pals, Handy Dandy and Candy, the honey bears on the front of every sugar crisp package. Hi, what are you carrying? Oh, sugar crisp. We love it. Everybody does. Because Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Nothing like it. Sugar Crisp is nourishing puffed wheat with a tantalizing sugar and honey coating. Mighty grand eating three different ways, right? It sure is. As a cereal, it's dandy. Just sweet enough. No sugar needed. Sugar Crisp is wonderful with just milk or cream. And it's dandy for snacks whenever you're hungry. Yes, Sugar Crisp is always good, day or night. Or eat it like candy, right out of the box. You can't stop nibbling, Sugar Crisp. No wonder folks rave about this honey of a cereal. It's extra good three different ways and always gives plenty of quick food energy. 
So mind what the Sugar Crisp Bears say. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Genuine Post Sugar Crisp comes in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. Buy Sugar Crisp tomorrow. Roy Rogers offers a ranch home to young Ted Barnes, who has been in trouble with big city authorities. And after a rather inauspicious first day in Paradise Valley, things seem to be much brighter to Ted. For life on the Double R Bar Ranch is proving to be the life for him. Hello, boy, Ted. Stick with him. Hey, that kid's a wonderful hand with a horse, ain't he? He's a natural cat. Easy, boy. Easy. Oh, oh, there, Clipper. How was that, Roy? Boy, that was top, Ted. I've never saddled broke and gentled a two-year-old any quicker myself. This Clipper's going to be a great horse. You bet he is. And now he's got a great master. He's yours, Ted. Mine? You kidding? Of course Roy ain't kidding. Oh, gosh, Roy. Thanks. Oh, boy, Clipper. How George can things get? Well, that's the last staple. We'll have to go back to the tool shed and get some more. Clipper and I'll do it, Roy. You and Pat sit down and relax for a minute. All right. Hi there, Clipper. Hey, look at him. Leaf on that horse. Ted's not going to be a cowboy. He's going to be a circus rider. Help me, Clipper boy. Go! Clipper boy, go! Roy, it beats all. When that kid got off the train six weeks ago, why, he wouldn't even look you in the eye. I don't think there's any such thing as a bad youngster, Pat. Not if they have a chance to be something else. The old sheriff wasn't quite as lucky as we were. Joe Linder may be a college-type lawman, but he hasn't done much to stop crime around the valley. Two burglaries in Mineral City and one in Hollow Wells in the last month. Yeah, there was another one last night, too. Somebody broke into the co-op office at Terminal. What? No kidding. That's what the sheriff told me on the phone this morning. Well, looks like he's coming out to finish the conversation in person. Sure enough. It's the sheriff and Joe. They must have been in turn to investigate him. Oh, there. Oh, 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 howdy, oh. Sheriff. Hi. Joe. Hey. Oh, Rogers. Me and Joe's been to terminal, Roy. Fella got better than $400 out of the cash drawer. What do you mean, the fella? Do you know who he was? You bet we do. Well, now, Joe. Uh, Roy, where's Ted? He just rode over to get some more staples. He, he'd be right back, though. Why? I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to grill him about that robbery last night. What? What? Why, Sheriff, that's silly. You know Ted's been as straight as these fence posts since he got here. And don't you go grilling him. I'm afraid the kid got careless last night, Roy. Or maybe you know someone else around town who wears blue and white checked kerchiefs like this. Hey, that does look like one of Ted's. Yes, but well, there's not. Well, we'll soon find out. You mean the punk's got the gall to try to brazen this out? Go, Clipper. Here's the staples, Roy. Thanks. Easy there, Clipper boy. Well, hi there, Sheriff. Hi. Mr. Linder. Hey, Ted, uh, I guess the Sheriff wants to talk to you. Sure. What can I do for you, sir? Oh, Ted. Is this uh, your kerchief, Barnes? Gee, it looks like one of mine. Sure. Sure it is. All right. Where were you last night? Now, let's not be ridiculous. Ted was in bed pounding his ear. Well, as a matter of fact, I wasn't, Pat. What? No. The moon started shining in my window and... I got to thinking that Clipper and I had never seen how the mountains look in the moonlight. So I got out and saddled him, and we took a nice long ride. I got back about four this morning. Was anyone with you? No, just me and Clipper. Well, Sheriff, I guess that about locks it up. Ted, did you ride into Terminal last night? No, I... Hey, what's this all about? You know what it's about. Don't try that. Cut it, Linder. Ted, there was a burglary in Terminal last night. Did you have anything to do with it? Roy, I... You know darn well I didn't. Don't you? Well, that's good enough for me, Ted. For me, too. You admitted this was your neckerchief. How come it was found in the co-op and terminal if you weren't there? That's something I'm afraid you'll have to answer, Ted. Maybe Ted can answer it, Sheriff. And before he even tries, I want you to let me look into this thing. Well, well... We better lock the punk up while Sherlock Holmes here does his looking. I don't think that's necessary. Sheriff... 
Will you let Ted stay here if Pat stays with him? Well, I've known both two fellas a long time. Uh, will you give me your words you won't let them out of your sight, Pat? Oh, of course I will. All right, then. You can have a few hours. We better be getting back to the office, Joe, and check the report. You're making a mistake, Sheriff. And I think with my training, I ought to have some authority around here. Come on, now. Sheriff, my great. I don't mind telling you, Roy. This looks bad. Roy, I didn't do it. Why can't that guy leave me alone? I don't know why Leonard's got it in for you, Ted, but the first thing I'm going to do is to go in town and talk to the man in the clothing store. Here, Trigger. Come over here, fella. Talk to the man in the clothing store? Yep. Ted didn't buy all the checkered neckerchiefs in the place, and I'm going to find out who did. Come on, Trigger. Let's go. Here you are, Miss Evans. Will that cover it? Wow. I can't change a 50, Brian. Pay me next time you come in. Okay. And you think it over, won't you? Ted's a fine boy, and if you wanted to forget that fight, I don't think he'd ask for an apology. Yeah, but look, with his background, That's you can... That's a lot of rot. Your folks may have a lot of money, but that hasn't anything to do with basic decency. Well, you... you, you uh, howdy, can... Dale. Hey, Hello, Brian, boy. I'm glad I found you here. I couldn't miss that yellow convertible. No, I guess you couldn't. I'm going to come to the point fast, Brian. Do you have any neckerchiefs like this one? No. I don't know anybody but Ted who'd wear a loud number like that. Although you're a pretty cool flash at times yourself, Brian. You sure, Brian? Yeah. Why? Because Mr. Kent says the only people he remembers selling this design to are you and Ted Barnes. Roy, what's the matter? Hey, wait. Wait a minute, Roy. Kent's right. I did buy some like that. Uh, it was just a day or two after... Well, after the day Ted got in town. Okay, then I'm going to ask you to help Ted out of a jam. But I never wore any of those darn things. I'm sure of that. What do you mean? Well, I, I left the package in my car and sort of forgot it. Gee, I don't know. I've never seen him since. All right, Brian, that's your story. But why don't you go home and think it over for a while? Sure, Roy, I'll go home, but... I don't know what in heck you're talking about. Roy, what in the world's going on? Oh, that kid. I don't know if he's lying or if he's really mixed up. Dale... The sheriff and Linder stopped at the ranch just now, and they were excusing Ted. I know that too, Dale, but a kid from a home like Brian Stratton's, well, he, he said he'd get even with Ted. And if he tried to give you a $50 Roy, bill... Roy, I'm sure Ted's not guilty, and I don't think Brian is either. Maybe he is spoiled and maybe a little wild, but he... Roy, won't... Dale, you seen the sheriff? Well, I saw him a little while ago, but... We gotta find him. We gotta organize a posse. The bank's been robbed. The what? bank's been robbed? Yes, by young Brian Stratton. Oh, no. Brian Stratton? Sure. He had a mask over his face. But do you know anybody else in town with a bright yellow convertible? Dale, saddle buttermilk and meet me at the bank as fast as you can. Back to Roy in a jiffy. Right now, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. The Sugar Crisp Bears are smart little critters because Post Sugar Crisp has a really different and delicious flavor. You see, Sugar Crisp is wholesome, nourishing, puffed wheat Coated with energy-rich honey and sugar. It's a wonderful treat as cereal. Already sweetened. You don't need sugar. Just add milk or cream. And Sugar Crisp is swell for between-meal snacks, too. Or eat it like candy right out of the box. However you eat it, it's always good. So ask Mom to get genuine post-Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. He had a blue and white checkered bandana pulled up over his face. He stuck his guns right under my nose. What could I do but give him the money bags? Are you sure it was Brian Stratton? How could we miss that yellow car, Dale? He pulled away from the curb like it was jet propelled. All right. Well, which way did he drive? I ran out after him, and he whizzed around the corner and headed down Camelback Road. Okay. Dale, I think we can cut him off. We won't wait for the sheriff and his posse. <laughs> Trigger boy. Hot buttermilk. Faster, faster, boy. 
We'll hit the top in a second now, Dale. If Brian stayed on the road, we'll spot him. There's the car, Roy. He's coming fast. Trigger and I'll angle down and cut him off. Pops. Good. We're lucky we know this country, Trigger. He won't get away from us. Yep, he's got a blue and white kerchief over his face, all right. Hey, Brian, stop! Kid's shooting at us. He's desperate. We'll have to stop him. There, I got his tire. Oh, oh, oh. that wheel, kid. Hang on. Oh, you made it. Don't shoot again, Brian. I won't hurt you. Roy, there he goes. He's running for it. Well, he won't get very far. Let's go, Trigger. You were foolish to run for it, Brian. Someone was bound to catch up with you sooner or later. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, let's get that mask off. Uh, Joe Linder. Let go, Rogers. Don't touch me. Trying to frame a couple of innocent kids. What are you talking about? Roy, come here quick. Be right there, Dale. Come on, Linder. Not so rough, Rogers. You haven't seen anything yet. Now, Mark. Hey, oh. On the floor of the car here, bound and gagged. Here's the real criminal, Dale. Joe Linder. Get the ropes off the youngster. Rogers. Give me a chance to get away. You can have the money. It's all in the car. Then. That's all I want to hear, Linder. Now you can listen to this. <laughs> there. Brian, are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. Somebody hit me over the head, and that was the last thing I knew. I'm sorry I sort of doubted your story about the neckerchief, Brian. Leonard stole them out of your car. Yeah, but what happened? There was a bank robbery, Brian, and you almost got blamed for it. Well, the posse got here in a hurry. Sheriff's going to have quite a surprise. Roy, Pat and Ted are riding with them. Good, I'm glad Ted's here. Roy, have you got him? We heard Brian Stratton rob the bank and... Brian didn't have anything to do with it, Sheriff. Any more than Ted had anything to do with the robbery at Terminal. There's the real culprit. Joe Linder, my deputy. What's that? Now, that's the man. He'll talk when he wakes up. You mean he's the crime wave? He's it. I guess he took this deputy job thinking he could get away with anything in Mineral City if he was hiding behind a star. And when Brian and Ted got into that scuffle in the restaurant a few weeks ago, he saw a chance to use both of them to protect himself even further. Well, that's the last time I'll hire a mail order deputy. <laughs> I never would have believed it. And I never would have believed Ted was guilty of anything. Roy, you mean I'm clear? You bet you are, and so is Brian. Now, I wonder if you kids would do me a favor. Sure, Roy. Yeah, of course. What is it? Shake hands. And don't come out fighting. Ah, cool as a pool. Put her there, the cowboy. Neat as a beat. Shake, partner. This year, even more calls for help from your neighbors, your community, and all America make it necessary for the Red Cross to expand its services. This year, the Red Cross needs $93 million to do its job. Answer the Red Cross call for humanity. Contribute generously this year. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again. Mm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls, remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Come and get it. Come and get it. For quick two-minute energy for work and play, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them? How about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple-wrapped post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. 
Look for Grape Knots Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in our cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Marvin Bryan, Johnny McGovern, Michael Miller, and Stan Farrar. The script was based on a story by Nate Kaplan. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.